The Africa Cup of Nations starts this weekend, so it's time to look forward to one of the most entertaining competitions on the planet. Dean, we're going to look at some of the favourites to lift that trophy. Yeah, I'm going to start at number three. Go with Morocco. Okay. A lot of people wouldn't really put them in the fold, probably just consider them as outsiders, but this is a team that haven't lost a game in 90 minutes since 2019. Like, that's not a bad run, is it, leading into a, a tournament like this? They've got a really nice team set up. The big surprise is that Hakim Ziyech is not involved. Um, obviously, if you were looking from a distance, you didn't know too much about Moroccan football, you would just assume that he is the star player here. And he probably is like the most talented Moroccan player out there right now. But because of his application, because of the way that he's been in the build-up to this moment, they've decided to omit him, which is a big, big decision. Yet, they've got other players to fall back on. The star is going to be Hakimi, obviously. Um, defensively, offensively, there's so much that he can give this team. Um, I don't know, I just think Morocco have got a lot about them that could really help them go far in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's based on a very good defensive line. Um, Wolves is Roman Saiz, is the captain. And Sofiane Bouffal having a, another good season. Yeah. And obviously, people remember him from his, his time at Sunderland. But uh, having a good season in France at Angers, and we'll pull the strings. And rotating with him is QPR's Elias Chet, who's been on fire in the championship this season, having a really, really good year. Up top, Youssef Nassiri of Sevilla will lead the line. He's had a, another one season in and out of form injuries, but we know that ultimately he is more than capable mm. of, of firing for the glory, a top tier striker. Um, and alongside him, Sevilla teammate Munir, who has also had a Spanish cap, yeah, interestingly. That's a nice combo, but it's, yeah. uh, yeah, that was, it's a lot of firepower here. Mm. And, you know, their club keeper, Yassine Bruno, uh, should be between the sticks at the other end. I mean, there is quality kind of top to bottom in this Morocco side. They have Ghana in their group, which will be a bit of a tussle. Ghana have been a little bit off colour of late. And I think that anything less than a semi final for this group of Morocco players will feel like a disappointment so yeah i suppose three is probably about right yeah i think regard. so yeah look as i say some people won't see it that way some people will think that they are just like dark horses for this tournament but i've, I've got higher expectations than that i think they can it's a nice setup it's quite cohesive I think. that's it and that's what i'm really looking for right now at number two though i've gone for senegal because it's really hard to look past this team when, when you're looking at three favorites um for many people, they are the favourites. A lot of bookmakers have Senegal as the favourites too, and for good reason, to be honest. They've got like an all-star cast. Um, and if you watch a lot of European football, there's going to be names in here that um, you're used to watching every week. So Sadio Mane, Kaladu Koulibaly, Idrissa Gay, Edouard Mendy, there are others. Um, they've just got an unbelievable setup, and there's star quality in every area of the field. They also qualified unbeaten. They were finalists in 2019. Yeah. They've got a pretty easy group as well, so they're almost certainly going to be in those knockout stages. And when they get there, they've got those guys that can make a difference at both ends of the pitch. Like they're go it's going to take some beating to get Senegal out of this tournament. And have you know, made that difference at various places in, at club level, right? Yeah. And it's interesting because I think I'm told at least that there's a feeling in Senegalese football that anything less than winning the trophy here will be a disappointment and could cost the coach, Alio Cisse, his job. Which is pretty, you know, it feels a bit hard. That's a good way to start. But it's also a statement of, I suppose, how good that they feel that this squad is. And, you know, in Mendy, there's probably the best keeper in this tournament. They can field a back four. I don't think they will, but they could field a back four that plays for Napoli, Bayern, PSG and Milan. <laughs> um, the midfield is packed full of talent and dynamism as well. Adrissa Ganage, I think one of my favourite players on, in the world. Mm. Just the way that he, he gets about, breaks up play. Um, and up top, a, a cast of sort of, Bully Dia, who plays for Villarreal, Keita Balde, once of Lazio and Inter, Watford's Ismail Assar, and young Bamba Dieng, who's at Marseille and has been tearing up a couple of trees. They're part of Sadio Mane's support cast. <laughs> you know, you're looking at this, there's a lot of really talented footballers here, and you can see why they're confident. That said, it doesn't always click for this side. They've been held recently in a few games against lesser opposition on paper. Uh, and I think they need to get off to a fast start if they are going to cause the damage that they have the potential to do. Yeah, I mean, they could do that, though. They could blow away Absolutely, teams. 100%. So we'll see how, how strong they start. But yeah, Senegal could actually set the tone for how good you have to be to win this tournament. But if there is one team that can reach that level, that can go to that bar, it's got to be Algeria. And that's why I'm sticking them in at number one. This is the best football team you'll probably see at the tournament all round as a team. 
They've got it all. They are the reigning champions as well. They're on a 39 match unbeaten run as they head into the tournament. Um, defending their crown, they'll be confident they can do that because look, the star man is going to be Riyad Mahrez. There's no looking past that. At Man City, he's not that, that star. Um, well, well, he's not because they've got a cast of them and, and you know, people automatically look towards Sterling or De Bruyne or a name like that. But, but Mahrez, he is a superstar now, isn't he? Yeah, like absolutely. It, um, the way that his uh, career has gone and upwards trajectory has been really, really impressive in the way he always seems to find it within himself. Even when you start to doubt him, Mahrez raises his level. But beyond that, they have Ishmael Benasser from AC Milan. They've got Saeed Ben Rama from West Ham, who should not be overlooked at all because um, I think we've started to see signs of Ben Rama making his own name at West Ham. We were watching we Ben Rama in the Championship and thinking, this man is He's wasted should in this league. never be allowed to play at this level. He yeah. was way too good. And ultimately, you know, he obviously got that move to the Premier League and took a little bit of time to settle and now starting to shine again, you know, right at the top. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see, look, they're going to battle with Ivory Coast for top spot in this group. And that's no easy battle at all. No, but, but it's a battle they should win. It is a battle they should win, yeah. So, I mean, there's a, you know, I'm not going to claim to have seen loads of Algeria and the Beyonce, like, but... As I've started to research this tournament, like it has become quite clear, like why, why they're reigning champions, and also why they're in such good form. Like they are a brilliant team. Absolutely, like a really, really well built, well structured unit that feel like everybody knows their place, which is hard to say sometimes with international football, right? There are some teams who are full of superstars across the world. This doesn't apply to just this tournament, but across the world. And you go, how does everyone fit into this system? It doesn't feel like that mm. with Algeria. It feels like everybody knows exactly what they're up to. And I suppose they feel like the team to beat, right? And, and that doesn't mean it's a dead set. We sat here in the summer before the Euros and said that it would take either an outrageous performance or a bit of a collapse for someone to beat France and them not to win it. Now, both of those things kind of <laughs> happened, right? Um, so don't take this as a done deal no. by any stretch of the imagination. But I think Algeria feel like the most cohesive and well-built side in the tournament. Yeah. Benasser on form is basically a one-man midfield unit. He is that good and he gives license for the two full-backs, Gladbach's Remy Bensibayini and Nice's Youssef Atal to fly forward and join that attack. And it feels like... You know, in some ways, they are a really, really strong outlet in terms of attacking prowess. And there's options everywhere to score goals. You know, Slomani's record for Algeria is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. You've got Mares, you've got, <laughs> as you say, you've got Ben, uh, ben, Rama. ben Rama, you've got Ben Sabaini, you've got Atal. There are players everywhere here who can cause damage. Yeah. And I think they have more than enough to get the better of almost anyone if things go right. Now, yeah. flip that, because we haven't talked about Egypt, right, who probably have... The best player in the world right now on form in Mo Salah. Yep. And not putting them in the top three sometimes feels a bit mad. Yep. But the truth is that the cast around him don't feel as strong as the teams we're talking about here. And there's far less cohesion to Egypt as a unit, it feels like, than there is to the three teams we've discussed. Yep. I suppose like, like Argentina with Messi for years, right? It feels a bit like if you can double, triple mark Salah out of the game, and that's not an easy feat, even if you are double or triple marking him. Yep. But if you can do that, you can kind of shut Egypt down. And obviously, if you have a player of Salah's brilliance, you never write that team off. Because yep. it, he's so good that he can turn games by himself. But I think because of the people around him, Egypt feel a bit more like a wild card than a favourite in, in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. And look, Liverpool fans will be looking at this tournament thinking, oh, look, you're talking about Mo Salah. Like, we want, him, we want Egypt to go out. We want Mo Salah back. And they'll probably be thinking the same about Sadio Mane, who we've just been talking about at Sadio as well. But you're right. Like, look, Egypt, we haven't put in the top three. They could win the tournament. It's going to be a brilliant competition. It yeah. really is. Yeah, really, really looking forward to it. We'll be keeping an eye on all things AFCON here on Live Score.